Yes, GPT-5 has finally been launched. And in this video, I want to compare it with the also recent Opus 4.1. We'll first compare pricing, then code quality, metrics, and then an empirical test. This empirical test is basically my opinions after I've used this model extensively in the past like 10 hours since it's completely for free right now inside of Cursor. I actually praised pricing at the very top because I believe it's a bit obvious and it is because of this graph right here. This is a graph of performance versus total cost. And as you can see, GPT-5 is way up here in the nearly 100% success rate along with a very low cost. While that, we have Claude 4 Sonet down here, as well as Claude 4 Opus. In this chart, we still don't have Opus 4.1, but the pricing is basically the same. If you come over to Anthropic's pricing page, you'll notice that they have Claude Opus 4.1 listed with a $15 input and a $75 output. Down here, you can actually check for the Claude Opus 4, which has the same exact pricing. But to be fair, I believe that in the performance scope, Claude 4.1 Opus would be somewhere up here. While that, we have GPT-5's pricing, which is 12 times cheaper than Opus 4.1. And this is extremely important for Vibe Coding. This is just the input, like just the input. What I mean by that is because Vibe Coding, you'll need to use a lot of context. Every time that the AI agent goes through your code and fetches anything from your code base and uses that as context, that is inserted inside of the input. And as these inputs gets cheaper, what dramatically happens right now is that options like Cloud Code between Cursor kind of changes. And let me actually use Xcali Draw to kind of explain this in a really rough way, so don't hate me in the comments, but so I believe before inside of Cursor, we could use 500 prompts basically for Claude Sonet, for example. Then they corrected their pricing system and now I've seen a lot of people complain that they haven't been able to send more than 80 prompts using Claude for Sonet. And now the rough comparison here is that since Cursor has based its pricing around how much it costs to use that API, and now we have a really similar model to Cloud Sonnet 4 that is 12 times cheaper, then this usage amount basically gets multiplied by 12 as well. So now instead of just 80 prompts, you'd get roughly, again roughly, this is not exact at all, but basically around 960. Even if I'm really off by this calculation and you only get like 500 for example, just Changing the pricing enables us to make a lot more prompts. But now the argument would be, okay, but are these prompts even worth it? Am I just getting quantity or am I also getting quality? And that's what we'll see now with code quality. But before I move on, let me vote on the obvious option here for pricing, which is GPT-5. Wow, that's a nice check. Okay, now for the code quality, I need to get my coffee. By the way, Brazilian coffee is the very best. Okay, now on code quality, I didn't want to be the only person giving this opinion here in this video since, I mean, it hasn't been 24 hours since the launch. So having more people test this is really interesting. That's why I came over to X to find actual people that really leverage these type of tools efficiently and really will understand if they improved or not. So starting off with McKay Wrigley, I hope I pronounced his name correctly. If you want to pause the video to read through what Grok summarized who he is, feel free to do that. But for me, I've known this guy because of an open source work he did and it was a phenomenal work, which made me respect him and also respect his decisions. Along these decisions, I won't read through all of this. Let's just go straight to for code. Cloud code with Opus is still king and frankly, it's not close. I'm widely suspicious of people who claim otherwise. And then he makes some claims on why some people would just say that uh, GPT-5 is better. Aside from that, he did mention that it is a phenomenal everyday chat model. I will default for it for all normal chats. So it seems like he actually enjoyed GPT-5, but just not for coding. Also, the API price is incredible. I, I mean, I don't think anyone disagrees with the API pricing being extremely awesome. Now let's move on to Theo. Well, he is a content creator that I really enjoy. He, he's also a phenomenal coder. I just think sometimes he gives some controversial opinions that make a lot of people mad but I really don't care about that. I enjoy what he builds. I enjoy how much he collaborates with the entire community, what he did for developers, and also now what he's doing for even non-technical people by just talking about these vibe coding tools, or even the breakdown he makes for specific technical topics just shows that he understands what he's talking about, which also makes me trust him, but he has a different opinion. 
I don't know the price and I don't even care. I will go in depth for this model because he was testing GPT-5 apparently uh, before the launch. And then he followed along with, and I've been using GPT for a bit now, this model broke me, it is so good. I didn't know what the price was. I assumed it would be O3 Pro priced because it is that smart. At this point, it would be tied, but then we can go over to David Shapiro's opinion, where he says that after playing with GPT-5 all evening, it's become increasingly apparent that benchmarks aren't everything. And he mentions this because uh, as you'll see along the video, benchmarks for GPT-5 just say that GPT-5 is massively better than any other model. So if he came to this conclusion, it might just mean that it isn't as good as the benchmark says it is. But to this point, it's all just opinions. Let's actually look at what these models can accomplish with the same prompts. And that's what Dan right here did. So down here, he compared making a basic landing page. He shows us his entire prompt down here and then gives us what he thought was the results. But it's pretty easy just looking at it. As you can see, the one on the left is GPT-5 and the right is Opus 4.1. So left, GPT-5, let's see what was built here. Yeah, a pretty basic landing page, to be honest. And then if we go over to Opus 4.1, yeah, it's actually, I mean, it used better icons, it structured things better, the, the shadow is better, and it just feels like a more professional and closer to production ready landing page. Then down here, it looks like he asked it to make a game. So this is the result for GPT-5. I don't believe this is a playable game. It seems like it needs more prompts to get it finished. And also like for the design, I mean, it is something. It doesn't look so cool, but now let's take a look at Opus 4.1. Apparently you can actually choose the color and it seems like a more playable game full of different colors. Uh, this is again, closer to production. Then down here, we have a making a modern landing page in existing code base. If you open it up, this is GPT-5. Really boring, to be honest, these colors. I don't know if he prompted it to be this way, but I mean, I feel like it's a bit boring. Also, the gradient doesn't look that good. It seems like it has an issue down here. Uh, let's go over to the Opus 4.1 build. I don't really like this one either. Yeah, let's, let's say this is a tie. I feel like Opus is still a bit better here, but let's let's give it a tie for this one. Now, making a web app. This is this is more even more interesting for the channel. A lightweight web app, mini time buddy that lines up multiple time zones in a grid, shows matching local times for any chosen date and hour. Works fully offline and is built with plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is interesting. So, first one up is GPT-5. You'll notice that this like this is basically what it did now 4.1 is i mean it just gets the color better it works with contrast better to make whatever is really important be seen it also seems to have a white mode yeah i mean cloud opus 4.1 just wins these tests for me we also have another test from jay here which tested gpt5 on the left let's watch this this is the landing page it created i really enjoyed this prompt he made because look at what was designed from Claude. Now this, this is really, really cool. If this was actually the same prompt, I mean, Opus would be far ahead of GPT-5 in coding quality. Yeah, so because of the opinions, because of these tests, I need to give this over as code quality for Opus 4.1. I believe that it handles one-shot prompts better. If you're not designing the entire prompt, like being really specific as to what you want, and you just want a model that builds it faster and just handles whatever you didn't think of uh, in, in a better way, I'd go with Opus 4.1. Now let's go over the metrics. And for these metrics, I found a website that seems really interesting. And even I'm even envy of this website because I wanna make my own uh, LLM comparison website. And I might even do that in future videos. Let me know if building this is something that you would be interested in seeing. But basically GPT-5 smashes Cloud Opus 4.1 in nearly everything, to be honest. The only one that Cloud Opus seems to get close is the SWE Bench Verified, which consists of GitHub issues and their corresponding fixes allowing LLMs to be evaluated on their ability to generate patches that resolve that issue. 
Then as for the price analysis, we've already looked through this. It's basically 12 times cheaper for input, 7.5 times cheaper for output. Now context window is another really important metric to look at because this is what will allow uh, whatever you're working with to look inside of your code base and have all that inside of the context window. But not only that, it has to actually be reliable in the sense of not only having the context window, but being able to fetch for that previous data and use that data efficiently. And that is what Cloud Opus, or at least all of the models from Anthropic are famous for. So even though it has half of the context window for input tokens, if it can remember what was the first prompt you did efficiently, then it's just better instead of just having 400,000 tokens that won't exactly remember. And that is something I'll comment in the empirical part of the test, but if you've already tested this and have a conclusion as to if GP5 maintains the context window efficiently, then let us know down in the comment section. Scrolling down to the knowledge cutoff, we only know that it was cut off for GPT-5 in 2024, which honestly I was expecting 2025 at least, at least like the beginning of 2025. But I mean, that's okay. And we don't really know when was the knowledge cutoff for Claude Opus 4.1. We have other two interesting metrics here for vibe coding, which are latency and throughput. So latency is more about which is the time it'll take for the code to get started, to for you to actually see uh, the streaming coming down. So let me give you an example. Uh, as soon as I type hello, right? If I say, hi, can you just answer me back with a hello message? So now this time right here is the actual latency. This time it's taking to answer me back is the latency for GPT-5. And it's actually four times bigger than Claude Opus 4.1. And then it actually answered me. While it was answering me, it was streaming the response back to me. So each letter that it was sending, actually each token it was sending over to me is this throughput. So 100 tokens per second for both of them. Uh, if you test this inside of Open Router, you'll notice that Along the day, it varies for both of them. You'll see that for Opus 4.1, we have a latency of 2.69. And then for GPT-5, we have 10.31. And that's maybe because there's a lot of people using it. Uh, then the throughput is much higher for Opus 4.1 right now, as well as we have GPT-5 with a lower throughput. So right now, it's much slower for GPT-5 in both metrics. But from these print screens I took yesterday, you'll notice that the throughput for GPT-5 was better than the one from Opus 4.1. And this can also just come down to which provider is being used. But overall, the metrics has to go over to GPT-5 as the way that they integrated reasoning without us having to choose between a normal model and a reasoning model, it just is always reasoning, might be what really makes it stand out in the benchmark. Now, initially I really wanted to have this empirical choice as I felt like I really wanted to test this inside of my own code base, uh, use GPT-5 through cursor and really compare it to the experience from Cloud Code with Opus 4.1. Now on one side, we have a one shot possibility with Cloud Opus 4.1. This is actually true. I noticed that I can have more prompts being understand and dealt with in an objective manner than GPT-5. GPT-5 will often talk a lot, like it will explain a lot of things. It's very verbose. While with Cloud Opus, I think it has a more developer approach where it assumes that you understand things. And in that sense, maybe for non-technical people, they would benefit more from using a more verbose model like GP5. Now talking about performance and all is really great, but what I feel is like left out in the majority of these style of videos is, okay, but which one can I, as an average person that wants to code through something, I don't even know how to code, I'm a vibe coder, I'm a non-technical person, I have a business, and I really just want to create an app, and I'll probably fail while I'm building it, so I have to use a model where I it, it accepts these prompt errors. I'd say that you have to go with GPT-5. But if you already have all the concepts in mind, you already know what you want to build and you want to get straight to building, then Opus 4.1. Because every time I'm prompting inside of Cloud Code for Opus 4.1, I feel like that prompt is precious. Like it's going to build something way better than GPT-5, for example, but I have a limited amount of requests 
requests I can make. Rather than inside of GPT-5, I can fail more and not be charged for those failures that much. So if you're a non-technical person, you want to test out trying to build these things, use new AI tools for building entire apps, just go with GPT-5 inside of Cursor. First, because of GPT-5 and how much you can make mistakes and not be overly charged for that, but also because of Cursor's interface. But if you're a developer or you have all the concepts in mind already and you don't mind a lot with interfaces, I just go with uh, Cloud Code using Opus 4.1. But to be honest, I'm using both of them. If I were to compare GPT-5 with Cloud Sonnet 4, which I believe is the model that most people use, then I'd completely give it over to GP5 as it actually is much better than Cloud Sonnet 4, even in code quality. And also if you're serious about building something, I'm designing an entire 14 days course inside of the AI Forge, which is my community, where you'll go through the absolute zero, have a really copy and paste starter kit to start off, and I'll show you the entire process of developing the MVP all the way to production. Thanks for watching and feel free to contribute to this comparison down in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Till then.